Hi, this is Tatiana, and uh, as I say in the beginning of all my videos, I wanted to explain that I'm not a doctor, and these videos are part of my own uh, coping strategy, as well as uh, my deepest hope is that um, someone who may be in a narcissistic or abusive relationship hears the things that they need to hear to validate um, uh, what they are going through as um, you know we're suffering in an abusive relationship um, oftentimes we don't know that we have a gut feeling and um, and don't know it, if it's real or not so that is my goal um, as well in these videos is that uh, um, if you don't have someone to talk to that you hear something here that um, validates what you're going through so that you can start making a plan on how to get out so uh, this video today is about uh, one of the games that narcissists play and that is guilt and uh, coming back to what I was saying about these videos being part of my coping strategy um, this particular subject uh, kind of drives that home to me because uh, you know doing the videos makes me recall and reanalyze um, what I have been through and so guilt uh, as a game that narcissists play kind of st stymies me in a way because I, I feel impervious to guilt meaning I, I, I just don't feel guilt so <laughs> that doesn't sound right but uh, I think you know what I want to say is that uh, you know one of the reasons that it's two reasons I think as I was trying to think through the examples that I do know about um, guilt as a game that narcissists play two reasons that I don't that that particular strategy doesn't work on me is because of one of the experiences I went through when I was um, uh, almost 13 I was 12 years old and I talk about that uh, in the video removing labels uh, so I'll talk about that in a moment and um, and working through that particular issue and secondly um, as I've mentioned before you know I, I am of a Christian belief so I, I truly feel forgiven um, however I have seen and and went through my experience that I broke out of of guilt being a um, successful strategy that narcissists use for their supply um, to, to draw pain from you um, so that that makes them feel fulfilled so I'm gonna give you um, uh, three examples and then at the end I'll talk about um, my perception of how to um, how to stop participating in that particular game so example number one is the one that I was mentioning about um, when I was 12 13 uh, talk about it in the uh, removing labels video uh, so quickly it is um, I was um, sexually assaulted by my stepfather when I was 12 and my stepfather went to go and um, convinced my mother that I had seduced him at 12 years old the seductress so um, it was huge and I, like I said I talk about it in the other video in, in more detail but uh, the key uh, of that uh, scenario uh, in regards to guilt is that I quickly left like I said my mother believed him and I'm telling you what she believed him believed him and um, I moved in with my father who is abusive as well and was a uh, physically abusive person and yet this was so traumatic and painful to me that that was the better choice in my life is to live with a physically abusive and verbally abusive father rather than live with my mother who believed that I seduced her husband so anyway um, you know and and I didn't I didn't talk to anybody about it you know a lot of us who have been sexually abused don't talk about it especially when I got that type of reaction from my mother my own mother you know there, there was no self-confidence in talking to anyone so guilt um, 
the guilt is designed to kind of uh, stop you in your tracks, really, emotionally, psychologically, and you are just beaten down with that guilt. And that is the scenario he had set up, uh, my stepfather, except that I had removed myself. So, uh, but you know, at 13, um, you know, I wasn't ready for that kind of heavy intellectual bullshit happening in my head. I truly just was not psychologically prepared. Um, and as time progressed, you know, over a few months of living with my father, I was truly falling apart. I, I recall clearly um, having a mental, such a deep mental struggle in my head of replaying obsessively the exact scenario that had happened how he had sexually assaulted me and and obsessively played it in my head um, where my mind was fighting the guilt. I know that I didn't seduce him, but because my mother believed him, I kept trying to tell myself at some level I'm wrong and my mother is right and I did seduce him and so I would replay it you know I mean in order for my mother to discontinue loving me it was something I needed to seriously consider and and compulsively would consider and I and I truly think that our minds um, uh, want <laughs> us to feel guilty in that scenario where it you know if I if I accepted the guilt for seducing my stepfather I could go to my mother for forgiveness and get her love back. So that is a huge, huge, huge motivator for me to feel guilty. She will love me if I feel guilty. However, the truth is I did not seduce him. And it really wasn't until, I think, babes, I'm 42 now, and I think Less than two years ago, as I was kind of praying and working through this again and, and, and thinking about um, just some more details about it, all of a sudden, poof, I remembered from way back then, you know, 10, he moved in with us when I was 9, so from 9, 10, 11, 12, I remembered conversations and things that had happened, and I realized he had been you know, it was an abusive relationship between them, and so, you know, a codependent relationship, and I could, and I clearly recalled the things that he had said, passing, in passing, and then certainly he must have been doing that in private as well. He set up my mother. He set her up to believe. So by the time, you know, by the time that he had assaulted me, he had already established in her mind that I was sexually attracted to him. So I'm not going to go into the details about that, but I clearly realized, and that sucks that it takes that long, that's how big a head fuck guilt is, is it took me 30 more years um, for everything to finally connect in my mind, for me to swim my way out of the depths of guilt and to understand um, that, uh, that he had set that whole thing up uh, in order for me to feel guilty. And, um, and and control her anyway. So um, that is the my first example of guilt. And I'm going to say, even though I should say more clearly, swimming out of the deception is what took 30 years. Swimming out of the guilt took me a few months. I actually, my father ended up, even though I hadn't told him what was going on, my father eventually took me to a psychologist. Um, and... Um, uh, the psychologist told me I was having the first signs of schizophrenia and I he gave me a prescription and I remember reading through the medication oh man I mean I was 13 and and the side effects of medication like that at that at that time in the early 80s was hi I was like I'm fixing my head it freaked me out so I um, I remember I, we had gotten home and I, when he, my dad went to work, I took out my journal and 
and I journaled and journaled and journaled and journaled and really what I truly deeply know and believe is that the struggle that was going on in my head you're a bad girl you're a good girl your mother hates you I love my mom all of those different voices were so struggling to find their place I they were manifesting into different I was starting to clearly define that part of my personality as their own entity and that's what the doctor was perceiving as the starting steps of schizophrenia that I had these other personalities developing and I journaled until and I, I mean I remember journaling maybe I don't know 7 p.m. until 2 o'clock in the morning just crying and praying and writing out everything and repeating it. I did not seduce him. I did not seduce him. No, I did. I did. I did, etc. So it, it was a huge, 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 huge thing in my life to work it out and to, and to clearly see all of these personalities that I was trying to uh, blame for my behavior were all my voices and that that was okay. It was okay that all of those voices um, were all in my head, that, that, that they weren't different people and different demons controlling me, etc. They're all my voices because I have all of these thoughts. And as I journaled, I came to the point where I thought, where I know, I know that I know that I know that I know I did not seduce him. And I concluded with that and all of the other things that um, those side effects or whatever um, started to come back into place. And um, that is why to this day I am maybe even more than impervious. Um, I am adamant about guilt. There's just no place for it. There is no place in your life for guilt. There's just no place for it. So we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. Example number two, um, as we know, um, you know, in abusive relationships, there is usually a parent that has been abusive, and that's what creates that uh, abuser. So my ex-husband, the where is he? He is in the covert narcissist videos. Uh, my ex-husband, yes, had very covert, uh, I never met his mother because um, uh, she had passed away, but the dad was absolutely a covert narcissist and as well as using religion for guilt. So that's a whole nother special issue, but yes, religion can absolutely be used for guilt by a uh, narcissist for his supply. Um, so with my ex-husband, the two things that I saw his dad do um, in order to trigger guilt in my husband, um, I remember one was that every holiday, well I think Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving he, they would make plans to come up and, and visit us and then, you know, uh, they would, they would uh, you know, they're supposed to have arrived and two hours later it's like, you know, he would call them like, are, you know, are you coming? And then they would say, well, we went out to the car and the, and the tires, the tires are just not, you know, they're just not looking safe for the drive and they live like, I don't know what it was, two or three hours away. So it's kind of like to me like, okay, so you went outside your house five hours ago and decided that you're not coming. But here we are calling you two hours after you're late and you're now telling us that you need new tires in order to come visit us for Thanksgiving. So here my husband is waiting for Thanksgiving dinner with his family, with his, his father and, and his wife at the time. And, and you know, you're treating your son like that, like, um, you know, you need to feel guilty that your father doesn't have um, tires, you know, a vehicle that's safe enough to drive up and come and see you, so therefore you need to buy me tires. And that happened several times, several instances like that. Um, and uh, I think at some point my husband stopped participating in that, my ex-husband. So um, that was really shitty. That was a shitty fucking thing to do. And I've heard of many other people who have 
experience that type of guilt. It's very passive aggressive, but it is designed that, you know, basically you're a bad person because I don't have this and so you feel guilty and then you purchase that for the narcissist in your life, whether that's your partner or um, your parents, etc. So, um, and the other thing I remember he did, we were having a conversation one time, the father, my ex-father-in-law, we were having breakfast and I recall um, I, 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 you know, if you can't tell, I'm a type A personality. I am hardcore type A personality. So I was attending, what was I getting at the time? I was working on my bachelor's degree and we had, uh, so we were having brunch, a bunch of, all of his family was there. And we were sitting at this table, dad sitting across from me. And I was telling him about the week prior, uh, something had happened and I was so so stressed out. I, I'm the type A that on finals day, even on midterms day, I will study to the last absolute second in my vehicle before going to my class. And I think almost always uh, I would be crying with stress and panic. Um, uh, uh, stress and panic before I would take these tests. So, and I graduated magna cum laude. So it's not like I was not a good student. I'm just that hardcore, okay? So anyway, I'm talking to him about how the week prior, because I know that my classmates are turning in lower quality work and getting A's, okay? It's my own level of what I consider an A to be, right? But I know my classmates are turning in this because I see it and, I, and you know, we've talked about it. So anyway, you know, I'm like, I had bit the bullet and had turned in something that was below my standard, okay? And I'm, and I'm talking to the dad about this. And this is when I find out, because <laughs> I had wondered this, I knew he had gone to college and, and, and that he had wanted to be a teacher or something like this. So anyway, so I'm telling him, you know, like, ah, oh, and I'm, I'm an ex like an idiot. I'm expecting this Christian man to extend some type of compassion towards me. And instead, he literally looks at me with disdain. I mean, you know, it, 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 you know how you feel when somebody throws litter on the, fl on the ground right next to a trash can and you just want to look at him like, are you, are you serious? You know, two, se two centimeters more and you can put it in the trash can? Okay, that's how he looked at me for turning in a to my standards, a substandard, but yes, I did get an A. That's how he looked at me. And then he proceeds to explain to me how, when he was working on his, what is it called, your dissertation? He was working on that huge project that you have to do to complete your PhD. So the dude has gone from associates to bachelors to masters, and he's getting ready to finish his PhD so he can get a, um, a, a teaching career in, in, at the professor level. And so he's explaining to me how he just was not satisfied with what he was creating. And um, so he just decided to drop it. And I'm looking across at him, looking down on me for turning in one paper that was substandard to my standards and realizing that he he's using that excuse that you need to do this to the standards of God's highest standard and if you can't do it then you just don't do it and that was his excuse that he had given himself his entire life so that my ex-husband had to grow up so poor that they lived in a warehouse my ex-husband as a teenager in high school had to wash himself in a metal basin in a warehouse because his dad made toy trucks as a living and still made toy trucks as a living. Toy trucks, wood, wooden toy trucks. And, uh, and that was his reason, was he, was he was a better human being keeping his children in utter poverty than I was turning in a substandard paper. Okay, that was quite the long elaborate story. I guess I needed to get that out that there we go there was guilt guilt coming from a man who left his children in poverty their entire entire childhood up until 
until they were 18 in, a, in utter poverty and then guilts them for the rest of their lives to pay for his crap <clears throat> and t trying to tell me that I'm a substandard Christian. Um, that's guilt, babes. That is a narcissist using guilt for their supply. I was supposed to walk away there feeling guilty, right? From this pathetic asshole, okay? Perfect narcissist situation. Okay, last example is uh, my ex-boyfriend's daughter, guilt. Guilt, 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 guilt. That girl was just like a pro. She, that guilt worked. It worked. That's what I'm saying. Guilt doesn't work on me, but guilt did work on him. And that was a sad, sad, sad thing to watch. So the, the easiest thing I can say, and this is a teenager, so, you know, I mean, I think she's a narcissist, but I haven't had enough experience with teenagers. Maybe all teenagers are narcissists. I don't know. <laughs> but my belief is that she's a narcissist because I have seen her, I think, do probably every game that I've done a video on. But guilt was one of her best ones. And, and here we have a situation. I'm just going to give one example of what I saw multiple times, but it was the same exact scenario. For example, she's busted for smoking pot at the house with her friends. And I say, this isn't okay. We've talked about this. We've set our boundaries. This is the consequences we've talked about. Go do it. And he goes to confront her. And I'm waiting, you know, like I'm up on the deck waiting because it's not my daughter. I, it's not my right to confront her. We as a couple agreed, this is what he wants for his daughter. This is what I'm telling him as an educator. This is how you do it. These are how you set boundaries, blah, blah, blah. But it's his daughter, so I'm not the disciplinarian. So we know that she's done this thing that is not okay. You go take care of it. I'm waiting. And he would come back. This happened many times. He would come back, so I didn't hear the conversation, but he would come back and he is crying. He, dad, is crying and then says, I've just done terrible things to her and that girl is hurting. And I, I mean, probably by the fifth time that this happened, I was like, you fucking sucker, you know? He would go and confront her, you know, listening to how he conveyed what had happened. Um, he basically would go to confront her and then somehow she would gaslight him and then turn it around to guilt and say, you know, some previous relationship that he had had like six years earlier. So she's like, let's say she's 16. He was in a relationship with another woman when she was 10 and uh, she is still emotionally devastated by it and so anytime he would confront her about anything she would start crying somehow be able to switch and and turn it to um, making her dad feel guilty for this relationship that he had been in and she did um, you know I think once we had broken up I, I believe you know she no, when we were still together, um, she had tried to make him feel guilty for the relationship he was in with me. So anyway, um, so it doesn't, I mean, it, you know, the narcissist doesn't even have to be your partner. In this case, it, I truly believe it was a daughter because I watched it and wow, it was just such a clear game. Okay, so those are my three examples and um, sorry for being long-winded today. But I really did have to think through this one. And the reason I th had to think through this is because, as I said in the beginning, I, guilt doesn't work on me. So, um, so hopefully I have the best advice on how for it to not work on you. Because I, as I'm saying you know, with my ex-boyfriend that I watched, I watched her play it over and over and over again, even though I would tell him you know, how long are you going to feel guilty about this relationship? You know, she's like 16, you know, she's going to, how long are you going to feel guilty? You were in this relationship and you were not even trying to hurt her. So, so I feel like with, you know, what I've seen is that guilt is, is, is a very difficult one to break out of. It can be wrapped up in our religion. It can be wrapped up, as I'm saying, in fatherhood guilt can be wrapped up in as I saw with my ex-husband you're a bad son if you don't feel guilty as with my own mother I was a bad daughter if I didn't feel guilty so these are huge emotional motivators for us to feel guilty and as I said with working out my guilt in my diary 
I believe that if you want to break free from guilt as a um, game that the narcissist is able to successfully use on you, um, I'm a, a, a deep advocate of journaling out. Maybe more so, even if you're a social person, I feel like it is such a long-winded one to work out, it's not good for you to talk to someone, unless you have a counselor. Unless you have, are you, you are paying someone or the government is paying for someone to listen the whole thing out. Um, but, but I, so I, you know, I, I feel like journaling is the best one to do. And, and I, and, and I'm, and I, when it comes to guilt, I, I'm not so sure that it's helpful to have other people listen to your particular story and to be able to get feedback. Because we all have such complicated uh, mechanisms around guilt. For example, if you could actually talk back to me, maybe you're going to have some religious opinions about what I've been through. And, and that's not going to help me work through my truth, right? And I'm hoping that I'm giving you some advice to just work on your truth because somebody else might condemn you for what you feel guilty about. That ain't going to help. You need to work out and forgive yourself for whatever you feel guilty about, okay? So, um, so the number one thing that I'm, I'm going to clearly state for you to truly consider is that there is a difference between conviction and condemnation. So those of you who are familiar with the, with the term conviction as a religious term, conviction is um, what, the, what the Bible talks about as the Holy Spirit coming to you and telling you you did something wrong, okay? And that's conviction. And the purpose of that Holy Spirit coming and saying that to you, to convict you, is so that you repent and become forgiven. It's a very simple mathematical equation that you don't need to be religious to experience you feel convicted oh I did something wrong and what are you gonna do with that there is a purpose to it I'm going to do something with that I'm going to repent I'm going to ask for that person to forgive me and then I'm going to be forgiven so even if you can't go to the person that you've wronged you can still go through that very simple process and uh, as I said I, I have I don't feel guilt because it, that process for me happens so quickly now. I know I did something wrong. If I can go to that person, I immediately go to that person and I ask for forgiveness and then I'm forgiven. If I can't go to that person, like, I don't know, flipped somebody off in traffic, okay? And then I thought about it later and I'm like, oh my God, I was, I was the one in the wrong, right? Yes, okay, I do things that are bad, it's true. And I've done much worse things than that too. Okay, and I can't go back to that person for forgiveness, but I have gone through the process again. Convict, okay, re repent, forgiven, okay, and you can go through that per process within yourself. Um, the difference that's conviction, condemnation, condemnation, you did something wrong and you will never be forgiven. Never. It just goes on and on in misery <laughs> and feeds the narcissist, okay? Condemnation is a completely different thing and that is where guilt comes from. When you feel like you did something wrong, that's not guilt. It's not guilt. It's just a pause, a moment of conviction. You need to do something about that and you do something about that. Guilt comes from being condemned. You suck. You did this. You did that. And you are this. You will always be this. If you don't do this, you're that. All of it. And you can even do something about it. My ex-husband could buy, you know, tires or whatever, carburetor, whatever his dad was guilting him to get. The son would do that. And guess what? Next holiday, something else is wrong with the car. So there's never any forgiveness. It's just perpetual 
guilt, 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 guilt. It's a lot of the big reason, right? It's the biggest reason, I think, why a lot of people are turned off by religion because there are religions, denominations out there that use guilt to make you be a good person. If you're a Christian and you're in a religion that's making you feel that way, seriously, it's a narcissistic relationship, get out, okay? You need to just go through conviction, repent, forgiveness. That's the way that God made it. And even if you don't believe in God, you can do that process. Okay, right? Did I make that clear? Conviction, condemnation, two totally different things. Condemnation never ever results in anything good. It doesn't result in anything good for you ever. And it will never result in anything good for the person who's condemning you. You never get the forgiveness. They never forgive you and have freedom from whatever it is. Guilt, there's just no purpose for it. None whatsoever other than narcissistic supply. That's it, right? Anyway, I think I've made it more than clear. Guilt, probably my least favorite narcissistic game. I just have no time for it. No, it, it can't even register anymore. So um, that is my hope for you. So um, regarding guilt, uh, if, if, um, if you need to talk to someone about that, be very careful about who you choose to talk to. You know, even if it's your own pastor or your counselor, you gotta be very careful. You might find that your counselor um, doesn't agree with what you decided to do either. So like I said, I, I'm a big advocate for you to journal out whatever it is that you're going through. Um, and uh, and find your repentance and receive your forgiveness even if you're the only one who's giving it to you okay because this is this is your heart your mind and that's what we're fighting for is for you to have your heart and your mind back <coughs> excuse me okay so i'm gonna finish up if you do want to talk to someone um uh, uh, and maybe start trying to work that out if if it is helpful for you Remember, the National Domestic Violence Hotline number is 1-800-799-SAFE, 1-800-799-SAFE. Also, um, just in the numbers, 1-800-799-7233. So even if you just need to touch on that subject, give them a call and ask them about that and say, you know, it's con this... I think that this is a game that my that the narcissist I am with is playing because I feel guilty if I do such and such okay start working through that one it's a it's a huge what should I say uh, guilt as a narcissist game is a it, it is a huge one it, and it, it, it is difficult to break free so I'm truly I'm gonna actually sorry I can't help it even even if you don't like religion I'm gonna have to pray for you because that is a tough 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 one to break out of but I did it and I did it focusing on me and the truth so I hope that you do the same thing too. Okay, much love.